All right, let's get started here on a just a differentiated sort of a name or a word. Uh, what we're going to do is put a word into the 3D space and then twist the letters and raise them to different heights so that they kind of look um, a little more stylized. So let's get going. First of all, first of all, you need to log into SketchUp and uh, you can see the window you should be viewing. Uh, We'll start with select the select tool, this arrow, and I can use always get back to this tool with the space bar. Click on this character, we'll turn uh, the character blue, and I can delete by pressing the backspace or the delete key, or I can right click and hit the trash can. The character's gone, and <clears throat> now we just want to put a word into the environment. So what we'll do is we'll head over to the menus, which are on the left here. These are the tools, the menu for the tools and in this rectangle looking icon we click on it and a menu will show up and we have rectangles other objects polygon circles and at the bottom are letters so I'll click on 3d text and in here I just want to put a word I'm gonna put in here AVS to keep it short and simple but you can make this as many letters as you like next for printing we want to keep the height this is going to be how tall the letter from the bottom of the A to the top, how tall or high it will be, and I'm going to change that to 30. If you get the option, you can choose a different font, but if you only get the one font, that's okay, no big deal. And if you have an option, make it bold, and if you don't, no big deal. Just go with it, whatever it gives you then. Text is filled, yes. Text extrusion, this means how far off the page, how tall, like how, we'll call it extrusion how much it comes out of the, like how much 3D it is. And let's just start with 10. This would be one centimeter out of the page sort of idea, or off the surface. So I'm gonna hit okay. So that's 10 millimeters. And everything looks good, I'll hit okay. And I'm not gonna click right away, so be careful with that. If you click right away, you end up with the, uh, it kind of stuck out in Never Never Land here. What I like to do is bring my mouse over close to where these three colors meet, the three axes. When I get close to it, a little circle will kind of pop up and my object will snap to this right there. Do you see that? That little circle right there? If I move away, it's not there, but if I bring back, snap, and it says origin. So it actually snaps this object to the origin, which is this another word for wearing, saying where those three colors meet. Now I'll left click with my mouse and it's now stuck there. So I can zoom in now. This is a great time to practice zooming. So use the wheel on your mouse to roll inwards and you can zoom in and out. Now kind of a neat thing with SketchUp, it's really curious about where you put your mouse. So if you put your mouse on the left side, you'll zoom into there and zoom out. If you put your mouse over on the right side and zoom in, it goes into that spot and out. So that's something that can help you see details more specifically. The next skill you should understand is holding down the middle mouse wheel. If you do that, you can rotate and see all different sides of this thing. Kind of fun. And it really helps you to change details on different parts of your model. So I can zoom in and out. I can rotate. And then the last skill that's really good for navigating is holding down the shift key on your keyboard, either one. And then hold down the middle mouse wheel again. And you can slide or pan whatever object you have around. So you can rotate it, slide it, or pan it around. And that allows us to make some moves. OK. So hopefully you got a little bit of practice at that. And time for you to move forward now. And so what we're going to do is right now we have this object in what's, in what's called a component. I can tell that um, because it's in this blue outline. So if I click with my select tool and I click on it, it has that blue outline. If I click somewhere in the green space, just outside to, so that it's not selected anymore, you can see it's no longer blue outlined. So I'm going to click on it one more time. That's blue and outlined. And I can't really do anything with it other than move it around, resize it, and rotate it. But I don't really want to do that right now. Let's just leave it. What I'd like to do is do some editing, and so to do that, I can double-click. Um, 
Now I could edit in here. In fact, before we do that, I would actually like to do one other thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click with this blue outline. I'm going to right click on it while I'm in the select tool. So either click on that or press the space bar. Then right click on this. I'm going to do something called explode. What that does is it now when I click on with my select tool, if I click on any piece, if you recall before we got the blue outline, we no longer see that. It's now everything separated out into individual pieces. So the next thing we want to do is to turn all of these into individual components rather than a whole big component. So what I'll do is I will just click three times, one, two, three, and everything here kind of turns blue. And then I can right click and choose make component or I can press the letter G on my keyboard. So I'll do that. Component 1, I don't really care about the name. I'm going to do the same to the V, triple click, 1, 2, 3. And I can press the letter G, or I can just right click and say make component. 1, 2, 3, right click, make component. Alright, so now I have three individual pieces that I can work with. So what I want to do first is select the A and I'm going to move it. Now, I actually don't really care too much about how I move it. I think it's good to stay where it is, but maybe I'm just going to rotate it so it looks a little bit like it's not quite set up properly. It's a little bit off. All right, next, let's go over to the V. So I'm going to get my select tool again, spacebar, or use the arrow. Click on it. We're going to press M for move or down over here, we'll use it down here. So press the letter M on your keyboard. And maybe I'll turn the V the other direction. And then I'll click on it and just slide it over. Maybe I'll put it somewhere so it's kind of past the A there. And then my last one, so again, go back to the Select tool with the space bar or the arrow. Move the S with pressing the letter M or going over and clicking on this um, four arrowed icon. You can click on that or you can press the letter M. Let's just move that over and I think I might like to have it rotated a bit. So going, moving my mouse over one of those red plus signs or crosses and then I don't know what I'd like. Something like yeah, that looks too similar. Just a little bit off straight. For me, that looks good. Now, one important thing when it comes to printing, I do want them overlapping each other a little bit so that when it prints, it makes it all in one piece. Now, the last thing I'd like to do is I'm going to resize these. And what I want to do is just go to the A, maybe press S for scale, or we can actually choose um, from this Move menu the bottom one, that's scale, or I can just press the letter S for scale. And so what I'm going to do is just pick the middle one and bring it up or down however much I'd like it to be. So maybe I'll move the A a little bit higher. Maybe I'll leave the V alone. And then I'll use my select tool again to choose the S. And I'll scale that and maybe I'll bring that one up a whole bunch higher than the letter A. And now I'll go back to my select tool click the green space and I'll just rotate around. Do I like the look of that? Eh, maybe that S is a little bit too tall. Maybe I'll scale that back down. So I'll use the select tool, click on it, press the letter S for scale, and then just drop that down just a little bit. Now as the S is a little taller than the A, I like that. And so now I have an item that will be ready for printing. So first of all, let's save. So what I'll do is I'll click on the word save at the top. It first asks me for a title, so I'm going to say 3D Word. Uh, always give it a good name, it's really helpful. Hit OK. The next step then is we've already given a name, but we need to choose the location. And so when you're using SketchUp for Education, you can use your Google Drive. And I'm just going to pick, how about my Downloads folder? Just click one time. It's now a light blue color. So I'm going to save a file with the name I already gave it into the folder downloads and I'm just going to hit select. So don't double click in here. Pick the folder you want and then hit select. 
and it asks, it gives me a warning, but that's okay. This is now saved in my Google Drive, and I would be able to then upload this and get it printed. And that is the extent of this activity. All right.